So this podcast is more a why should you care if your photographer generates artwork? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it's be very easy for them to do some really cool things with poses and stuff like that to show off examples of ideas of what they want to do for your particular session. It's also a good way to create concepts that may not have happened yet. And by that, by what that means is if you've got a concept of using a bodybuilder, for example, in a boudoir shoot. And the reason I bring this up is I shoot both, but more importantly, a lot of bodybuilders have pictures of themselves in bodybuilder poses. But what if instead of being a bodybuilder in a bodybuilder pose, you're a bodybuilder in a boudoir pose? Why can't a bodybuilder pose in boudoir and have boudoir photographs done? They're already used to being in front of the camera to begin with, so why not take advantage of that and get some really great artwork of yourself in a completely different light, a sexy light. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. I know when we talk about boudoir, a lot of people just automatically think it's a woman thing, but there's no reason it needs to be. So as you can see, these generated images that I've got, and I can use those to show off different poses, etc., or to show off the concept of a woman with muscles posing in such a fashion. Now, these are all done with swimsuits because, A, this is YouTube, and I don't want YouTube to complain about the fact that they're in lingerie, which is how I usually generate these. But these could be in uh, any kind of different type of lingerie, and I could change the lingerie that's there. But I want you to notice something. And that's the face. And this is where it becomes important. When you sign your contract for your session, if you're allowing the photographer to use your photos, and bear in mind, you should make sure that that is part of the contract. Make no mistake. It should say clearly whether they can use your images or not and what they can use them for. Don't leave that part out. It's very important that you've got that in your contract. But also look and see if they can use it for generated images. And the reason I bring that up is the stable diffusion that I'm using allows me to substitute the face. So not only could I start off with a image of somebody, and modify that, manipulate that in a way. I could put anybody's face on these images. And that's where you start talking about the concepts of deep fakes and things. But again, make sure that the contract you have with the photographer is very clear about what you allow the photographer to do with your image. For example, if you want them to use the image because you want them to be able to promote their business, that should be laid out in the contract and which images they may use for that purpose. Now, it's a gray area if a photographer wants to use a pose because open pose, which allows us to Take an image such as this and use the outline of the person to generate a line drawing of a pose that the next image will then use. You'll notice a couple of my images here look very similar in pose. like these two, 
all right, three actually, where the legs bent forward just a little bit more so that you see the gap between the two legs, which you don't see here. But then look, we have this image and this image and this image. While these are the same pose, you'll notice there's subtle changes to the body shape. I went from a regular shape to a bodybuilding shape. But I'm using the same pose. So if you had a particular pose and the photographer wanted to use it, how would you feel if the photographer used that outline of the pose, not using you, but using the pose to generate an image, to add to their posing guide, for example? You struck an absolutely cool pose. He manipulated it a little bit, liked what he got, and then he wants to use it in the posing guide. How would you feel about that pose being used, but not you being used? And then the other part of it is, what can he do with your face and your body in those promotions? I wouldn't feel comfortable taking a woman's face and putting it on a pose that I generated. This is a generated face. Let me be clear about that up front. The face that you're seeing here was generated by Stable Diffusion. I started out doing a bunch of portraits. And if you want to see how I did it, uh, we've got the, the video on Tuesday. But I did a bunch of portraits until I got a series of faces that I liked, which I saved. And then I use that generated face here so that all of these would have the same face. So if I'm putting together a posing guide, I want it to be the same person and not 16 different people that I'm using. Now, why would I use this in a posing guide? By using generated images in a posing guide, I'm not, in any circumstance, inviting anybody's privacy because there's no way that these are an actual person. They're there to prove a concept of what someone looks like in a given pose. And that's the entire purpose of the image. It's not there to show off my artistry or my photography. It's just to demonstrate what pose you could be in during a session and to give you options of what you like and what you don't like when you see in the poses. But I would not use a client's face in one of these poses. It could be done. And that's why you have to be very clear as to what you allow in the contract. Simplest thing to do is to not allow the photographer to use the images for any purpose whatsoever. But I understand that boudoir sessions are expensive. The books are expensive. There's hair and makeup involved. So it's not a typical stand in front of a background and have a shot taken type of session. They're much longer, there's more posing, there's changes of outfits. There's a lot of different things than what you might be thinking of like in a headshot photograph. So what we're doing here is we're setting up an expectation in the contract as to what's going to happen. The easiest way for a client is to just say no. You can take my photograph, you can generate the album and imagery for the book for me, but you can't use it anywhere else. Going beyond that, then there's the question of can they, which images can they use? How can they be used? Can any part of that image be used in generation? And as I said, I, to me, it doesn't seem that I would be too concerned about using a particular pose because all of 
you has been extracted from that pose. It's just a wire outline, literally a stick figure of your body. Where the eyes are located, the arms are located, the hands just as being at the end of a, of, of a stick. So it doesn't bring anything of you into that image, just the way you were standing. But can the photographer use any part of your likeness in a generated image? So you want to make sure that that's spelled out. I would recommend that you say no to that. And the reason I will say that is it's one thing for the image to be something that you've selected. So if they were going to generate an image, a caveat would be that you get to see what they're going to use after they've generated it. Images, as you see here, have swimsuits. Images could be generated with lingerie. Images can be generated without any clothing whatsoever. So right now, saying no is the easiest way to go on generated images. Second to that is saying to the photographer, look, you can use them as long as I approve them first. You don't ever leave off the generated images section of the contract. You want to make sure that that's part of the contract and that is clearly spelled out what they are allowed to do in the category of generated images. Now, some photographers won't generate images and they may look at you funny for even suggesting it. They don't generate images now. That doesn't mean they're not going to do it in the future. So make sure that all of these things are spelled out clearly in the contract. And an extra little caveat at the end saying if there's any new technology that comes up, the contract is a no, basically. If a new technology comes on that generates images or does this or does that, the image can't be used for that. So the easiest way to do that is to specify the image if you want it to be used, which images can be used, and that they can be used only for promotion of the business. And that way it locks it in very tightly. You're not saying they can generate it. You can actually put it in a clause. And you can't use it for any derivative work. The image as is has to be used as is and nothing else. So to sum up, the easiest thing to say is just, no, you may not use my images for any purpose. Second to that would be, you may use images that I have selected and only those that I have selected for marketing purposes and for no other derivations of that image. And that'll take care of anything using generated images or selling your image perhaps to be one of those talking AI heads, for example. Then you can get into more specifics about generated images, etc. But by saying, this is what, I can, what you can use, this is where you can use it, and this is how you can use it, you're cutting off anything new that comes along and making the photographer come back to you if they want to use it legally for any other purpose. So that's why you should care about generated images. Again, these are just stable diffusion generated images. We didn't even touch on the fact of using one of these images and making it move, animating it, using it as a um, spokesperson. If you haven't seen those yet, where they take an image like this and they will use it to apply speech synthesis to it and make it look like it's talking. Um, and again, you probably don't want your image used in that fashion. 
So make sure that you've got a good contract with that photographer and make sure that what you want to see happen with your images happens and block the photographer from doing anything else with your image beyond that. That's what I got for you this week. I hope you got some good information out of this. Uh, and I will talk to you guys next week.